Okay. Good morning, everybody. How's it going? I'm going to show you today if you're struggling on how to figure out how to set up numbers for these projectile questions. I'm just going to show you how to create a picture, label that picture, how to create a data table, a chart that will help you figure out what numbers are considered X numbers and what numbers are considered Y numbers. Um, so we have this question here. Um, projectiles launched up and to the right at a velocity of 40 meters per second and at an angle of 34 degrees. So the question is, is how do we get the numbers out of that statement that we need so that we can eventually do some calculations? And these calculations are fairly in-depth and involved. So I want to show you the methods of how to set them up. So first thing we want to do is we want to draw your trajectory. Right. So I'm actually just going to do that real quick here with shape. Um, so I got my, let's call this our projectile. And I'm going to actually just do a curve line. Projectiles always follow kind of a parabola shape. Right. Okay. Now, <coughs> we, we know that when this thing is launched, it's going to follow this kind of general pattern of an arc curve. Um, and we want to make sure that when we look at this, then we know how to interpret that. So first off, take information from the question and draw that on here. So we know that this projectile is launched at an angle of 34 degrees. Well, what that what does that mean? That means if you drew a line, let's just say this right here is the ground. Okay, so if you drew a line from the ground as an arrow, right, that arrow has an angle of 34 degrees upwards from the ground. So zero degrees would be straight side to side. 90 degrees would be straight up and down, so 34 degrees, you know, about a third of the way up. Now, <clears throat> what physicists realized is that if you take that and you say, okay, this actually, the projectile acts like it's at the origin of an X and a Y graph, okay? And if you then draw on that arrow straight down to the x-axis and then you draw that and connect it with the origin notice how we have created a triangle a right triangle okay and so what we know about this triangle is that the length of the arrow is 40 and it's 40 meters per second. That is the velocity of the projectile as it launches out. It might be our marble launchers. It might be out of a cannon. You might be throwing something or kicking something. That's all we know. All we know is it's launched up and to the right at a speed of 40 meters per second at an angle of 34 degrees. Now, on this, this side of the triangle would be the opposite side of our angle. And this side here would be the adjacent. Now, if you don't remember that, that's listed and shown on your equation sheet. There's also a video that I've done for you, so you might want to look back at that. I'll have it linked at the end here, too. Now, this side is up and down. Up and down is a Y number. And because this is a velocity, this is going to be our VY. I'm going to call it VY1 because it's the speed of the projectile right when it's launched. And then the adjacent side, this is a side to side, so that's an X. So we're going to call this VX. And again, I'm going to call it VX1 because it's the starting speed. Okay, now let's go through and start looking at what do our notes tell us. Okay, so we first have to figure out using the angle in SOHCAHTOA to find what numbers those sides should have. Okay, so this is on slide 16. Okay, this is on slide 16 of our notes. So we go back and we say, okay, <coughs> opposite side is using sine. Okay, so I'm going to say sine of 34 degrees 
equals Vy1 over the hypotenuse, which is 40. And again, if you don't remember how to do the Sokotoa stuff, please go back to that video. Okay, and then for the adjacent, adjacent uses cosine. I'm going to say cosine of 34 degrees equals Vx1 over 40 meters per second. And I pull out my calculator. Please make sure your calculator is in degree mode instead of radians. Some of you might be in radians mode right now. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. I'm going to do sine of 34. To get the Vy by itself, I'd have to multiply both sides by 40. So I have 40 times the sine of 34. And that gives me that my Vy1, I'm going to put this right here, is 22.37 when I round meters per second. Okay, do the same thing for the x, except now it's cosine. I'm still going to have to multiply both sides by 40. So it'll be 40 times the cosine of 34, which is 33.16 meters per second. So that is some information we're going to want to make sure we know. So I'm going to say I'm going to create a chart here, and this chart's going to be x numbers and it's going to be y numbers. Okay, so x meaning numbers that are side to side and y is numbers that are up and down. And the reason this is important is because when we start to do calculations, you can't mix and match the numbers. The only thing that's true for both the X and the Y is time, because it doesn't have a direction. But if I'm using, say, this number here, my V1 for the Y, that's telling me how fast the projectile is moving upwards. I can only put that in equation with other numbers that are talking about the up and down direction. And likewise, with my V1 for the X at 33.16 meters per second, that's talking about a number going side to side, which means when I'm using it in a calculation, I can only use it with other numbers that are going from talking about side to side. So, okay, <clears throat> so that's the first part. Go to your next slide. Um, we know, oh, actually, I'm go here, because gravity is the only force and gravity only accelerates downward, okay, gravity does not affect the side-to-side -side direction at all, which means because gravity causes acceleration, that tells us, okay, if we pretend there's no air resistance, there are zero forces affecting how quickly something moves side-to-side, -side, which means for X, your acceleration is always going to be zero. And that's important for us, for our calculations. Okay, so my acceleration here, I'm going to put AX, is always going to be zero, and the units for that are always meters per second squared. Now, for Y, though, there is an acceleration. Think about what we just said. We have gravity. And what is the magic number that gravity always accelerates things down with? Negative, that negative here is really important, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so those acceleration numbers you will always know every single time. Okay, the other important spots that we might need and have information about is at the peak. At the peak, something important happens. Our projectile is moving, sorry, I shouldn't go this way, up and to the right, up and to the right, up and to the right, and then it suddenly is no longer going up, it's still moving sideways, and now it starts falling down to the right. <clears throat> that tells us something very specific. First off, let's label these velocity at the peak. Okay, let's focus on the Y, the up and down part. When something flies up, it eventually flies back down. Duh. However, what that tells us is that that very topmost part, right here, the velocity in the up and down direction must have been zero because it stops moving upwards and then right after that it moves down. Well, that means your velocity at the peak for the y is zero meters per second. But now for the x, the side to side, think about what we said, there is zero acceleration. If acceleration is zero, what does that mean? 
That means your speed never changes in the side to side direction. Okay, an acceleration of zero, acceleration just is saying how much is your speed changing? This acceleration of negative 9.8 here for the y tells us <clears throat> that our number for v is always going to be decreasing by 9.8 every second. Okay, that's what your acceleration means. Eventually that acceleration or that velocity is going to hit zero. And then remember when we say something starts moving down, that's now a negative velocity. So our number is going to be changing by negative 9.8 still every second. However, for the x, because our acceleration is zero, that means the velocity at the peak is still 33.16. Okay, another important spot is where it lands. I'm going to say velocity for the landing. An important thing for you to remember, if our projectile starts and ends at the same height, okay, it's had the same amount of time to go up as it has had to go down, which means gravity had the same amount of time to slow it down and then the same amount of time to speed it up. If that's the case, and you can do calculations to prove it, when it lands, if it lands at the same height, then the speed in the y direction will be the same number, but it's now going downward, so it is now a negative number. Okay, and that's what our slide, where are we here? That's what this slide, oops, sorry, next slide. That's what this slide is trying to tell you. Notice, okay, the vy number is the same, except it's negative because it's falling downwards. Notice also the number for Vx still doesn't change. Why? Because in the side-to-side -side direction, because we pretend there's no air resistance, there are no forces affecting the side-to-side -side movement, which means our velocity never changes in the side-to-side -side direction. So it's still moving 33.16 meters per second sideways. Okay? The only other thing you need to remember is the time. The time at the peak is always exactly one half of the total time. If, this is a big if, if we land at the same height. Okay, and remember time is the only number that you can use for both the x and the y because it does not have a direction. x and y just means direction. Now, all of this is supposed to help you to figure out our numbers here, okay? So, use this. This is how we set up our problems, and we're going to use this a lot. If you have any questions, again, please let me know. Please contact me.